My name's Hutch, I make videos and put them on the internet, and welcome to today's video. Normally I post quality time with Hutch episodes on Friday, but this last, uh, these last couple weeks have been crazy busy, and so I just got a little bit behind schedule. I'm really excited about this week's guest because he is, I'm gonna say, he's pretty much the reason why I got into YouTubing in the first place. During my meteoric rise on YouTube, once upon a time, people used to call me the godfather of YouTube. Uh, this is how I see Grizz. He is the godfather of YouTube in my mind um, And his videos basically inspired me to buy a capture card and start making my own videos So without further ado, let me introduce you to Grizz. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video. What's up you guys? My name is Hutch. I'm a gaming sex icon and uh, Holy shit. I've got probably the mother of all OGs at least in my mind uh, a man by the a man a nay a legend by the la by the name of uh, Zer Grizz. How are you doing man? I'm doing awesome, man. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Uh, so for people who don't know who you are, so, so maybe like people that are new to the the YouTube gaming space, why don't you why don't you talk a little bit about um, what you what you used to do back in the day and uh, what that whole experience was like for you? All right. Well, I mean, I started out like I was probably one of the first people to record gameplay on the on the Xbox 360. Um, Can you think of anybody off the top of your head that did it before you? Uh, there was, I mean, there was a couple of videos that I watched, but like the mainstay was all PC. I couldn't find any videos at all on, you know, how to record on console. And I spent like over two grand on like players that said that, you know, you can capture um, whatever's going on on your TV, all kinds of shit, dude. I blew two grand and spent countless hours and I found out it was just a $60 dazzle. So <laughs> that's what did you, know. you spend $2,000 on? I, it was, I'm telling you, man, I just, I was buying like these high grade, um, DVD players slash burners. Like I was trying to burn them onto a disc and then transfer them to my PC. <laughs> I was trying anything and everything. Cause once I saw some of these that were going on PC, I was like, dude, I gotta do this. Yeah. Like, it just looked like so much fun because like, I have a really creative side, you know, and I wanted to show that. What what and, about uh, it? What about it was so attractive to you? What about it looked so much fun? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I was I've been gaming my whole life, you know, since I was five years old. But just to to see, you know, people doing what I Call of Duty at the time, and they're, they're over here making these videos, man, using you know back in the day before. Uh, YouTube and all this other shit, you could use like some really good music, you know, you could use Pantera, you know, <laughs> yep, yep. all these good ass bands, you know, and I was like, dude, this is bad ass. I don't know. It, it just hooked me. I was instantly hooked before I even started because most people get, you know, inspiration and they start looking up stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, I did the same thing, but it was on a different scale because I had no clue what I was doing, where I was going with it. Yeah. And it just blew the fuck up. I so. remember you were, you and Syfax, but mostly you, you, you guys were the ones that I was watching, uh, before it even occurred to me to buy a capture card myself. And yeah. I, re I remember, um, like back then, like over a thousand views was like a lot, you know? And you had, um, <laughs> I want to, I want to say you had like seven or eight different montages from spanning from COD two to COD four when I found your channel. And you were you were doing stuff that I had I had never seen anyone like. It wouldn't have even occurred to me to jump with a scoped rifle, like to take cover behind a dumpster and then jump above it and then shoot someone that way. It wouldn't have even entered my mind. But it seemed like your whole approach to YouTubing and video making was trying to figure out ways to kill people in a video game with the most style of anything else yeah. out there that was out there on. YouTube that seemed to be your number one goal and I used to just like I used to check your channel you know pretty much every day to see if you posted something new for a yeah. little bit well, I mean, yeah well back in the day it was a lot easier to make montages you know because there wasn't many people doing it the standards weren't as high so it was nothing for you to put out a montage like once a week yeah just, you get a no scope across the map maybe a double headshot you're good man you know <laughs> piece that shit together throw some music pinnacle yeah. studio for the win and, and call it good but I did way uh, better when the standards were lower, way better. But they, were, but but the, like the young the young kids just dusted me after a while. I'm like, I can't do that. I can't. I just can't do what they're doing. Come on, man. I mean, you Wait. may be able to, but I mean, I, I I mean, it would just it felt like to me that the that the emphasis became more about 
making four consecutive names pop up in a kill feed instead mm-hmm. of instead of how cool the actual clip was. So it didn't matter yeah. didn't matter if your team was losing like 200 to 250 to, you know to 230 in a game of headquarters as long as you were rushing spawn and filling up the kill feed then that became the standard of a cool montage and I never liked that too much. I, I wanted to see people playing against, you know, players that weren't dog shit. I wanted to see people that were actually trying to win. I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to see more than just filling up a kill feed. I don't know what your fe- feel- feelings are on that, but that's how I felt by the end of it. Oh, I'm, I'm exactly the same way, man. When it comes to, like, montages, I'll look at little stuff like that. I'm going to look to see, you know, if you're on a kill streak, uh, what the score is. I, I look to a lot of different things. I don't just focus there in the feed. And I'll watch a montage, like, three or four different times just to pick up on little things. Not just the player does, but the editor does. I mean, everything, the complete aspect of the montage has to come out to you. Otherwise... Yeah, you're just gonna get burnt out. You're gonna stare at that bottom left screen. You're not even know what the fuck's going on. And you know, that's to me, that's what's kind of killing the montage scene as it is. It's it's overly saturated with people looking at the bottom left, you know, or top right. I guess if you're playing um, a different game. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I I look at all that stuff, man. And when it comes to making montages, like I'm doing one right now, Modern Warfare Remastered. So I can do the G Shot tutorial remastered. <laughs> G Shot. I'm telling you, man. I I feel like I don't know. I feel like the G Shot might be a myth, but I've seen you use it like a thousand times. So I don't even know. I don't know At the end, I've, I've actually got the the video. I made a second G Shot, an actual tutorial, at the probably about a month after the first one I released, and video at the end of this one, this montage. And I mean, it's still with the Dazzle capture card. It's, you know, it's old school, but I go through and I talk about it and I pulled off consecutively across the map, like 15 shots in a row. All right. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll believe it. I'll believe it. I mean, I'm, 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 oh, I want to believe it. Believe me. I want to believe in the G shot. I just need a little bit of convincing is all. Um, okay. So what do you think of, um, so like we, what well, how do you say that again? You know. You, oh, you're, you know what? Your audio cuts off just a little bit at the front whenever you start talking. So sometimes, like, you'll talk for like a wow. second and a half, and I won't hear the first part. So it's like a it's like a setting in Discord. We'll, if we had more time to go over it, then then we would, but we just can't. So, um, so to tell me real quick about uh, so you may, like I wanted to talk about how you feel about montages these days. Like, do you still watch montages? Do you still enjoy them? Who are you, who are, you know, if you do, who are some of the people that you like right now? And when you're watching a montage, what do you, what do you look for specifically in order for that to stand out in your mind? Because I'm sure you get, you still probably get linked to to people's montages on Twitter like every day. Like, yo, Grizz, check out my uh, video that I just posted. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, the thing about it is now, because like we were talking about, it's so overly saturated, I won't go back and watch a lot of montages if it's just one guy. Uh, usually I'm more more opportune to go after like team tosses and stuff like that where I know a lot of effort went into it you know if they recorded for six nine months or something like that and put it, their best clips together had their best editors work on it for another two or three months like those are like the montages I'm really more apt to watch unless somebody puts in there hey you know check out this Taj I've been working on it for you know six months eight months something like that yeah, and uh, then I'll definitely check it out. But if they say, "Oh, check out my week Taj," like I'm not even gonna click on that dude. Like, and yeah. it's it's no hate against that person. It's not like I don't believe that you can hit good clips in a week. It's just that I want to see a maximum effort put into stuff. Yeah, and that's me is more important because I said I, I pay attention to all the little details. Wait, let, let's go through the chronology here. Let's go through the history. So, like the first big production montage that you had was probably the Matrix One, right on uh, on COD Four. Yeah, that was that was the first one that uh, really took off. I mean, my very first one was Thunderstruck on on COD Two, but the one yeah, that yeah, yeah. really took a lot of time was definitely the Matrix on COD Four. Yeah, you dropped it as like a three parter, and I think that you had been dropping teases for it too for maybe a couple weeks or like a month leading into it, and it was like an event when that montage came out. You you know nobody had ever done a montage like that, and then you had other guys like you remember Pulse Fusions, you remember him. Oh yeah, yep. Hands, six tens, blackouts. I mean, the like the the approaching montages in sort of like a stylistic fashion and really kind of taking it seriously wasn't really a thing until until you came around and dropped that 
original montage. Were you happy with that when it came out, or, or are you the kind of perfectionist where you thought like, no, maybe I shouldn't have put that clip in there? No, I mean, I think it really turned out well. I mean, you got to think, I don't know if you remember back in the day, there was a website called Map Monkeys. They did oh, a I remember lot of everything. And stuff. Oh, I remember well, everything, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that guy, the one that actually started that website was the one that edited The Matrix, and his name was Ronan, and he never edited a montage in his life. Like, he never, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, basically. And, wow. I mean, he just killed it with, like, the, the deagles off the wall because, you know, none of us have ever seen it. So the standards I knew would be low enough where he could, you know, capitalize on that, and it turned out amazing. Yeah. I just, the, the biggest thing in that for me was getting the most variety because by that point, like we said, things were starting to get a little saturated. People were looking in the bottom left all the time. So I, yep, I really yep. wanted to get some difference, even if it was a triple. Like if it's yeah. a random triple, to me, that's better than a triple single in a spawn trap. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's all yeah. about variety. So then World, then World War Two, I'm sorry, uh, World of War came out and you came out with Impulse, which was like another kind of... Um, uh, I can't remember. Was that a single montage or was that a two-parter or a three-parter? I think it was a just a one-parter, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. It was just a, just a single part, and that was edited by Operator Perry and uh, oh, what was the other guy's name? He's uh, gonna hate me now. No, it was man. I know who you're talking about too. It was, it was Operator Perry and uh, fuck, what is his yeah. name, Grizz? I don't know. Son of, he's like still good friends with them. They play video games with them all the time. Oh my god, he was a uh, he was a part of Top Notch. Yeah, uh, I mean, whatever. Anyways, they all kind of roll together. But anyway, yeah, we we rolled that montage out. That one was kind of a. There, there's always been a kind of a thing in the back of my mind when I released that montage. I was contacted by a company, and they wanted to. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but they wanted to actually start charging people to watch it early. And I think it was it was yep. only like a dollar, a dollar twenty five. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. dude, I've never charged for fucking watching a video, and I think that's retarded. And and on and on and on and I told him I was like you know what if you're gonna do something like that because I can't remember what they were giving me like some like free access to a website or something I'm like if you're gonna do that I'm not really gonna promote it and I don't want a dime and yeah. they ended up making like uh, I want to say it was like eight grand <laughs> oh no yeah see I don't I don't I don't yeah I believe it there were a lot of people that were super hyped on that montage what I what oh, yeah. I remember about that montage is like that was that was really around the time that I felt like that's when you noticed the standards had gone just real sky high because there was so much murder in that montage that it was almost <laughs> it was almost hard to follow. It was just like one one quad feed after the other after the other with like a six feed in there somewhere. You're chucking C4 at people and doing crazy shit with that. Like it was a little overwhelming. When I, yeah. when I watched it, I was like, I, oh, my God. You had, like, 15 triples in there, I think. Yeah, it was, I think it was, it was, like, 16, and then uh, it was, like, a month and a half that I recorded for, and I hit 16 triples. And Operator Perry, on the last day, he's like, dude, I can't take any more triples, so don't <laughs> submit any more triples to me. And I gave him three more within, yeah. like, four hours, and he's like, fuck you. <laughs> I remember there was one part where you just cut together just, like, eight of them in a row at the end. And I could, I could oh, kind of, yeah. I could kind of feel like his pain as an editor, where it's just like, what am I have to put these in because they're triples? Because back then it was like a triple was still a big deal, and you were over here getting like, oh, you know, absolutely. twenty of them or something like that. <laughs> uh, so then Modern Warfare Three comes out, and uh, huh? and you or, no, 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 I'm sorry, was that no, no, Modern Warfare Two comes out, and you do yeah, the Matrix Reloaded for that one, right? Um, was that right? Did you do the re Reloaded? Was was Modern Warfare Two right? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, and it yeah. was. Yeah, I broke that kind of into three different parts, and and I was pretty happy with the way that one turned out. There's some really cheesy editing in there, and <laughs> but the, I mean, everybody loved that game. You know, the the sleight of hand pro was there, and I don't know. Other than like the painkiller and shit like that, like the game itself was just a really fun game to play. It was that game to me was a lot more about having fun. When did you come up with the? So, when, when, when did you come up with the idea of chucking a C4 in the air and then quick scoping it in front of someone? Um, well, I mean, we were looking constantly for new things. Um, the the guy from Map Monkeys, Ronan, him and I, like, we found out about the speed sniping in COD 4. Like, we were playing around with it one day, just dicking off, and we actually found the speed sniping and started doing that. I don't think anybody even knows where that originated from, and we were just two guys messing around in the lobby. I have no idea uh, what you're talking What's speed sniping? What are you talking about? Oh, that's that's like COD 4, you know, where you, you just hold your trigger button in, 
and you fire, and then you as soon as you hear the click, you Y Y, and you can shoot like twice as fast. Oh, that's you see, right. Like, stack yeah, yeah. no scoping with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we we did it just for fun, but then like I told quite a few people like about it and how to do it, other montage makers, and then you know a month later, all I'm seeing is these plus twenties and plus twenty five no scope. I'm like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck? So. Yeah, you can almost shoot the M40 in, in COD 4 like a semi-automatic if you fire and then as soon as, basically as soon as you start putting it, pumping another round in the, into the chamber, you just hit YY and you can no scope again right afterwards. So you can, you can fire out five bullets like in the span of probably like one or two seconds real fast. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, then, so just, we were, no, go ahead. I was going to say, we were, so we were messing around with different things. The C4 shot, that one was more solo. I was just, I was just curious, man. I was like, I wonder if you can actually do this because, like I said, we had the, the Sleight of Hand Pro introduced, so. And it literally took me like an hour to hit it my first time, and by the time I got it down and was doing it for Taj's, I was hitting it probably, eh, at least 50% of the time I was shooting the C4 out of the air. I tried a couple so. times to do it with a, um, I tried to do it with C4 and a Magnum in Black Ops 1, and I don't think I ever did it once, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah. walk me through your, like, so when, when you would spend, cause you would take like a long, you would take your time on these montage t montages, you would capture for, for, for months. You wouldn't just capture for like a month. You would do like these miniature t montages, but for like the big production ones, the ones that you would hype up that one, mm -hmm. those, those ones you would like sit on your footage for like months, six months, sometimes nine months, whatever, a whole year before you put something together. Can you tell me, like, what did it feel like for you to spend all this time and energy into making this, you know, one of these montages, and then finally for that video to go live, and you start seeing the likes come in, and you start seeing the comments come in, and you start seeing the tweets come in? Like, what was that experience like for you back in the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, back in the day, man, it was, I mean, it, it was like an event. Like, I was married um, to a different woman than I am now, and I would literally, like, get popcorn you know what i mean i would sit down with like a pack of smokes and some beer and just watch the fucking comments and i would just hover on that bitch for hours and like you said the first one was the matrix which is <laughs> fucking uh ronan the guy that edited it he was like three months behind on the due date and i'm like dude people are messaging me like crazy like cussing me out all this other shit i'm like you've got to get this done and he gets a hold of me the next day and he goes, hey, I just want to let you know I lost all your clips. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because at the, th that time, I was recording with a Dazzle, and my computer was just trash. So I didn't have the room on my computer for the storage, so I would just send them to him and then delete them. And he's like, dude, my computer crashed. I lost all your clips. I don't know what we're going to do. No. You know, normally, what, what most people would do at that point if they were bullshitting is they would wait for your reaction and then laugh and then tell you I'm just bullshitting. He waited 24 hours to come out and tell me the truth. So I'm thinking, uh, oh, my God, for a whole day, <laughs> what am I going to tell these people that have been waiting so long? <laughs> That's brutal. And I've got nothing to deliver. It was uh, it was interesting. But I, I don't mind waiting that long, man. I think it's worth the wait. I wish people a lot more people would take more time into it, and then we wouldn't have so much saturation. And the ones that you do have, you know, would be worth the watch. So. Um, do you still enjoy uh, COD these days? Are you looking forward to World War II? Bro, I, <laughs> I am so fucking ready for World War II. You have no idea. Because even though like I don't post a lot, you know, I don't post every other day or every day like I used to back in the day, but almost every day. And if I had a better internet where I could actually stream, I would be... Like, no one would have missed anything. It would have been Grizz from... You know, back in 2000, what, 10 or whatever, to current. You know, yeah, you never yeah. would have missed out on anything because I've always, I, I always play. It's just whether or not I take the time to talk over a video and then upload it. Yeah. yeah Lazy yeah. as fuck. But I get on here and grind every day, man. My gameplay is still like top notch. Well, that's so. why that's why streaming comes into comes in so handy because there's you know there were a lot of times when I'd be playing video games back in the day where. I would capture something, something cool would happen, but the rest of the, you know, gameplay maybe it was kind of boring or uneventful. And so there was no reason to upload it. But if someone, if, if you have a, you know, group of regular viewers that are in there watching it live, when that one thing happens throughout the match, it's like, it makes it fun. So it's like, you never know when those things are going to happen and they don't happen every match, but it's, it's really is, it, it really is a good fit for, for, for people like you and me, I would say. 
who you know oh, still yeah. still enjoy good gameplay. That's you know I try to I try to be good at the game that I'm playing. That's still probably my number one focus. But you know doing it live in front of a bunch of people really makes it more of a inclusive experience. It's a lot of fun, man. And, uh, so you you don't have really great internet where you live. Is that what the deal is? No, I live in a little city. So I mean our internet here. There's only like one internet provider, and uh, it's just you know subpar. Not only that, but I'm also running wireless off my Xbox and my uh, computer, so I don't really feel like running a cable, like drilling a hole through my floor and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's gonna make yeah. it tough for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> which one of your montages would you say is your favorite montage, and why? Why is it your favorite? My overall favorite montage would have to be my very first one. The Thunderstruck montage was. Because, like I said, I spent so much time and so much money and so much effort to find out it was something so small, but it didn't matter because, you know, it it was so so much fun to do. It was so worth it to me to get that montage out there. And I think I, I on my second one, my second or third one, I was like, yeah, this might be my last Taj, you know. I'm not, uh, not going to stick around with it very long because YouTube wasn't even really a thing. I was uploading to Google Video. You is know, that right? So oh, that, yeah, that is right. Yeah, because I would look up, I wouldn't even go to YouTube to look up your videos. I would search Grizz on on uh, on Google to see if I could find your stuff. Yeah, and it, I think YouTube was out, but it was kind of in its infancy. It hadn't really caught on yet. So uh, Google Video was was where it was at, and then it was actually shared by links. It's it's kind of scary, you know. <laughs> yeah. If it reverted right now, like back to the way it is, then like you'd just be getting spammed all day with inboxes. Check out my Google Video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, so what would you, what, which was the first montage that you did or video that you did that, that got, um, a little bit of views? Like what was the first spike that you remember? Like, wow, fucking 2000 people watched this montage. Oh, that would definitely have to be the matrix. Cause I think that one had like what, over 3000 likes in like five minutes or three minutes. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I can't remember how many. If, if you probably if you look up that video now it probably has like over I mean I, I'm guessing it has like hundreds of thousands of views if it's still is it even still up can you find no, it I, I think it's down uh, I, no. YouTube's gotten so retarded with its bullshit and... well they kind of had to there was no way they were gonna be a profitable company by allowing that stuff you know it was a good time it was a good time back then I remember just I, the, the the thing the only thing back then was like all you had to do was upload an, an, an unlisted video with the song that you wanted to use and then leave it up for a few hours and see if it got automatically copyright flagged. And if it didn't, you were good to go. But sometimes you would like, there happened to me a couple times where I would spend like a night, two or three nights of, you know, spending a lot of time editing because I used to edit all those videos myself only to have it copyright struck and or audio claimed like three days later, which was really frustrating. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I, re I remember the the Matrix ones back in the day having like I want to say they had anywhere between like two and five hundred thousand views, which back yeah. then was like insane. That was an insane amount of views back in the day. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to remember how much it had. I, I want to say it was over a million, but maybe not. Maybe it wasn't up that high yet. You might be right. I, I don't remember. It's been so long. Um, so so, so when when did you did so but. when but when did you notice like. So, so, so something in you—you you said you were going to stop after three videos. So something got you to keep going. What was what was that? Were you starting to get more views at that point, and you thought like, "Oh, okay, well, this is turning into a thing." This didn't mean anything to me, you know. Now it's completely different because now views equal money. You know what I mean? And back then, views didn't really equal shit. You know, <laughs> but what I was enjoying was people that were—I was playing you know, Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 4, and these guys were coming in the lobby like, oh, shit, it's Grizz, you know? Dude, I love that last video you did. It was it was getting that recognition back for the effort and work that I put into it. Yeah. That, that's what I craved. It wasn't, it wasn't um, to make money, you know? It wasn't about monetization. It was strictly about having fun. Yeah. And that's why in a lot of those earlier COD 2 videos you see, you know, some people play to win, some people play to, you know, show off skill. I just, I play to make people say, what the fuck? Yeah. I remember, you, I remember you, you used to play, uh, you had a couple clips where you would play with the BAR, the light machine gun, and you would no scope and try to get headshots with that thing from across the way. Oh, yeah, that? I caught two, baby. 
Yeah. Back when like I, I think in a, COD two, every sh- every headshot was a one shot kill. I could be wrong, but you uh, would, yeah. everything except for a pistol, and a pistol would get you a one shot headshot if it was point blank. But everything else, all the LMGs, and I don't know if the that was long range, but LMGs and sniper rifles and and um you know your your rifles in general, your M1 Grands, yeah, those were all one shot headshots. So yeah. I played on low sensitivity. And then I went to medium, and I think I was on medium when I was when I was hitting all those headshots. And then I did the V high montage, and I could never go back to that slower sensitivity. Man, I was getting, I was getting slapped. So I'm in the middle yeah, these stayed days. Up. I, I play on right. yeah, I play on six vertical and eight horizontal, so I can spin around a little Mid- bit quicker. Like in in the in Modern Warfare Remaster, I think that's a good setup because there's no jetpack, so you don't need to worry about your sensitivity being that high going up and down because nobody's jumping like doing double jumps. But uh, I play with Dietrich these days. He plays on 18 sensitivity. I don't know how. I can't like my brain doesn't work that fast to, to play on that high of a sensitivity. What are you What are you playing on? 15, 15 on MWR right now. So oh, I'm not okay. quite as high as Dietrich, but I, I gotta be. I'm I'm with you there. Like you don't have the boosting, but you do have a lot of multi level maps. You know what I mean? You've got you've got a lot of windows, a lot of head glitches and stuff like that, but you've got to keep it low enough where you can get the fine tuned shots if you're a sniper. So Oh that's for true, me, yeah. That's true too. For me fifteen's like bang on. Well, listen but, man, I, I uh I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on and uh reminiscing with me. It's been a lot of fun to go back and talk about that. That was such a like a like a like it was such it was such a grind and I remember spending like there were a lot of nights where I didn't get a lot of sleep because I was spending so much time on videos and in capturing and i'm sure that the kit the case was the same for you but you were having so much fun that you didn't even care and that oh no you know that to me was like such a it's like a such a sacred time you know because like the like the fires of my youtube career were forged during the kind of grizz montage era Um, oh yeah And, and a lot of people don't know this and and i don't know if i've even really talked about it a whole lot but when it went from and then, you know, Optic Hex got a hold of me and he's like, Grizz, you know, you need to do your, you know, need to do your contract with Machinima, you know, because you just missed out on like 13 grand this month. You know what I mean? Like right after that, I actually went through a divorce and I ended up losing like my job. I lost my, my car. Uh, I ended up losing my house. The house built for me when I was 21 years old. So, I mean, I was, I was doing pretty, pretty good for myself, but then like through that divorce, like all the walls came tumbling down. That was like right as the Matrix, I believe, was being released back in two thousand eight. Wow! So yeah, I had no idea. Like a lot of people, yeah. Like I, I was sitting there grinding and like playing games, and I could hear them like towing my car out of my driveway, and I'm just like shaking my head. You know, I'm like, "Fuck, everything's just falling apart." And uh, if it wasn't for you know the fans, and if it wasn't for Machinima and all this other stuff, it would have been so hard to get back up from that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, I mean, I went from basically having nothing, losing everything, and then you know to, I'd wait like two or three months for the Machinima contract to kick in because of the you know the it bounced back, man, and I was able to get a house and and get a new setup. So, you know, a lot of people don't know that that because of their support, because of the fans. They actually help me more than I'll be able to ever help them. So oh, yeah, no, I to- I totally know what you mean, man. There've been a couple times when life 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 has a tendency of happening sometimes, and it's not always awesome. And uh, I've I've been in the middle of a couple rough spots, and they one thousand percent made my life so much easier and less stressful. Even though it was already like overwhelmingly stressful, they, you know, oh, the, yeah. the viewers and the fans <laughs> prevented it from you know, really getting to an unmanageable state. And that's, you know, that's, oh, great. Yeah. that's, that's great that you mentioned that. I, I try to, I try to give as much recognition as I can to the, to the fans, especially the old school ones. Cause they're the ones keeping the lights on, you know? Oh, so, absolutely. I mean, so, I don't do it. I don't do this for a full-time job now. And like I said, I don't, unless I could go back to making six figures again, I don't think I ever would, but, uh, I, I enjoy doing it. And like I said before, if, if anything ever happens with YouTube where they quit paying altogether, I'm still gonna make videos. Like, yeah. it's 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 in my nature. I'll be 40, 50 years old, and I'm still gonna make videos. It's just get over it, bro. If well, you don't like it, I'm, well, sure, I'm sure a lot of people are really happy to hear that you you have plans to play World War II, and hopefully, oh. you, hopefully you get some better internet in your town, man. Because I'm sure a lot of people would like to watch you stream. 
you know and uh so yeah hopefully uh I fell off a lot, dude on the on the uploads you know i fell off a lot when it came to uh daily uploads or anything like that and to me i just i didn't have it in me and then these last what three or four cods were flying around and i just couldn't get into it you know it just killed it for me it really did but you know with this being back to where i started world war ii which was you know where cod 2 was based and boots on ground it's for me it's almost like the feeling of starting over and the nostalgia all like wrapped into one so i'm gonna yeah. be uploading a hell of a lot more yeah and yeah ride, i will have ride that nostalgia train man that's cool that's what i did with modern warfare remastered it was it, you know this was a really the, it's not over yet the cycles that we still have like five months left in this cod but i got a lot of bang for this buck i i had a real good time going back and playing oh, and playing cod 4 again and um, just playing game battles with the boys has just been such a blast and uh oh, I, yeah. I, I didn't hate the jetpack cods but it felt so good to to go back to um to go back to the basics of cod and uh, you know i got a chance to play world war ii a couple you know a week ago and it was it was great man it was like we only played a few maps but it felt terrific i think you're gonna dig it a lot um, oh yeah i could tell from the gameplay i was watching every fucking video i could click on bro i was like oh gotta watch another one gotta watch another one. my wife's just looking at me with a stupid look on her face you know and i'm just like dude this is awesome does she she, gotta, she can... plays cod too yeah um she plays cod she actually quit she hasn't played in almost a year uh she started up her own photography business so she's always on the go and setting up clients and doing photo shoots and coming home and editing late so yeah uh she doesn't really play a whole lot but she said i'm gonna try to give world war ii you know a, i'm gonna try to give it a whirl see how yeah. it comes so but uh, yeah i'm fucking pumped for it, dude can't wait to make videos montages like yep. ah well, um, let's. Uh, I want to play some pubs with you, with uh, with you when that game comes out. So I'm gonna, you know, stay following me on Twitter. I'll send you a DM, and uh, we'll we'll get some some fun sessions in here. Gonna we'll get we'll, we'll get like an old school lobby, man. We'll get you, me, Sandy. Maybe maybe <laughs> throw the blame truth and X Cal in there. We'll just wreck some shit oh, for a shit. few hours. <laughs> All right. Well, um, oh, yeah. thanks thanks again for your time, dude. I uh, 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 hope you have a good weekend, and uh, and I uh, appreciate everything you did for this whole scene. And you're welcome, man. Like I said, everybody's helped me out a lot more than they'll ever know. So, you know, hats off to you as well. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Take it easy. Have a good weekend.